Hey guys, welcome back to Ostrich Investing, where we analyze and debate specific stock investment ideas. Uh, I just want to start off by saying really appreciate all the new subscribers. Uh, hope you're enjoying the videos. If you do, please share with a friend. Um, and if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Today we're going to talk about a stock that very few people know about. I'm talking about a tiny little company called Microsoft. So Microsoft, it's technology blue chip, one of the largest companies in the world by market cap. In fact, depending on the day, it, it is the largest uh, company in the world. Secular growth trends are in place and have been in place well before COVID, but the pandemic's pulled forward some IT spending uh, required for work from home and the like, and companies that, that weren't uh, with the trend before realized how quickly they need to get their IT systems up to date. Um, and it's become a critical piece uh, for most businesses. So highlights of the stock, uh, Microsoft has significant recurring revenue streams from products, uh, like I mentioned, that are often critical to their customers. They generate high margins, profitability, and free cash flow generation. Uh, they've got growth runway and benefit from secular growth trends in, in IT. And they've got a great balance sheet. They've got net cash. So this video is going to review Microsoft to see if it represents an attractive opportunity for investors. Disclosure, Ostrich, I bought shares in Microsoft in early March at $165 or right in around there. So here's the business. Uh, Microsoft operates across three large profitable businesses. The first, productivity and business processes. So a lot of us know Microsoft's Office 365 product. Uh, so PowerPoint, Word, a lot of uh, a lot of software that helps us uh, with our whether it's assignments or, or business work. We also have SharePoint, Microsoft Teams. Microsoft also acquired LinkedIn back in 2016, and that all rolls up uh, in the productivity and business processes business segment. Intelligent Cloud is the next one, and it's been a big growth driver that we're going to talk about. Um, includes their public private hybrid cloud services, um, and now we're getting into words, <laughs> SQL Server, GitHub, which is a company that they acquired, um, as well as their enterprise and consulting services. Uh, but Azure has been a big driver uh, for them, and you often hear talked about uh, the three top cloud providers being Amazon, AWS, Microsoft with their Azure platform, and then Google Cloud. And then the third, uh, the third key segment is more personal computing. And here's where you have Windows, uh, Microsoft being famous for Windows, uh, and then their devices. So think about the Surface, as well as gaming, uh, Xbox, and they've also got their search segment. So Bing uh, shows up in here as well. So you add it all up, you've got $125 billion worth of revenue. You can see that there uh, by segment, and it's pretty even. Uh, each segment contributing close to 40 or a little bit over $40 billion in revenue. And then you can see here that the revenue growth has been nice. Uh, revenue growth uh, for productivity and business processes and intelligent cloud growing kind of in the 15 to 20% range, uh, which for a business this large is impressive. So now let's talk about the stock price performance. As you can see here, um, it's been a great five years for Microsoft. Back in 2015, the stock was trading around $50 a share. Uh, and it's been a nice steady ride up uh, and currently trading at $210 a share. Um, now, this is, a, this is a company that I actually used to own way back. Now, I think I bought it back in 2011. And uh, in June of 2012, I lost patience and sold out at $30 a share. And, uh, and then recently uh, got my act together, or well, we'll find out, um, but bought back, back in at the beginning of the COVID sell-off. So I think it was late February or early March, I bought in uh, around $165 a share. And of course, always tough to time these things, but would have been really nice to pick up shares here. I think it got as low as $135 um, a share. But uh, it's been smooth sailing for Microsoft over the last five years. And Ostrich has, uh, well, I missed the memo. Financials, so just quickly here, we'll talk about some of the segments in a bit, but the financials uh, on a consolidated basis, it's a nice story. 
11% uh, revenue kegger over the last few years, gross margins of 66%. So it's a lot of very profitable business. And the balance sheet is strong. We've got net cash, um, net cash of about 60 billion. 2019 highlights, just to give you a sense of how the business is performing. Commercial cloud revenue, it's up 43%. Office commercial revenue up 13%. Office 365 commercial growth is up 33%. Office consumer revenue is up 7 Office 365 consumer increased to 34.8 million subscribers. LinkedIn revenue up 28%. Server products uh, up 25%. Azure growth, Azure, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. That's not going to be good for my credibility on this video, uh, of 72%. Enterprise services revenue increased 5%. Windows, 14%. Microsoft Surface up 23%. Gaming revenue up 10%. And search, even Bing's doing well, for crying out loud. Uh, so, I mean, it's just... This is from 2019, but it just goes to show this is, you know, this is a story that has secular growth trends, but it's also got operational execution and, and has been firing on all cylinders. Okay, now let's talk about Q3 and COVID. And according to Kanye West, this might be possibly the greatest quarter of all time. And, you know, the easiest thing, I went, I went through the press release. So I just wanted to share a quote with you from their CEO, Satya Nadella. Um, we've seen two years worth of digital transformation in two months, from remote teamwork and learning to sales and customer service to critical cloud infrastructure and security. We are working alongside customers every day to help them adapt and stay open for business in a world of remote everything. And I think that quote pretty much sums it up. You can see here revenue of $35 billion for the quarter. Uh, that's up 15%. Gross margin, 69%, is actually up to two points. And diluted earnings per share, $1.40, up 23%. So amidst all the uncertainty with COVID, Microsoft went ahead and, and put out a quarter like this. Um, and it just shows not only the resiliency of the business model, but but obviously the, the critical nature, um, and particularly you know amid COVID, now more so than ever. You need Microsoft's products. So let's talk about the cloud. You know, where did the cloud come from? And it's been a, a huge source of source of growth for Microsoft. So the intelligent cloud revenue grew from 24 billion in 2015 to 39 billion in 2019. So it's it's almost doubled in in four years, 13% revenue kegger. And you can see down on the bottom right of the of the slide here, I actually went in and and uh, built a chart showing Azure year over year revenue growth rate uh, since 2016, and it's just incredible, right? It's uh, top line growth of 113 percent. It's it's steadily decreasing, but these are still incredible rates. So 99 percent, 91 percent, 72 percent, and uh, based on the Q3 2020 results. Intelligent cloud, the segment run rate, is close to 50 billion in annual revenues. And, uh, you know, we need to talk about competition a little bit here. Uh, it's been a huge secular growth story. Uh, Amazon with their AWS was, was one of the first to really dominate and is still the market leader. Um, Microsoft and Google have been playing catch up. Uh, Microsoft currently in second uh, position in terms of market share. Um, you know, one of the things that I've been thinking about a little bit, you think about data security and Amazon and Google and some of their other business lines, not all businesses might be comfortable, um, you know, using Amazon and Google's cloud uh, services. You know, they might prefer Microsoft, Microsoft being sort of solely focused uh, on IT and software and not worry about any competitive threats and uh, data leakage. And, you know, maybe I'm, I'm going a little overboard here, but if, if I were a business owner, that's just something I'd be thinking about. And I think that could play well in, into Microsoft's favor, particularly now as more and more we're, we're, we're seeing a lot of press around, you know, how Amazon and Google might be using their data. And I guess the last point to say is it's profitable. You know, Intelligent Cloud delivered 14 billion of operating income in, in 2019. 
I think another key part of the growth story is Microsoft 365, or I think about it, you know, a lot of it, the old Office uh, products. And, and really what they've done um, is they've transformed that from a legacy license business. You know, you, you, you'd get the license and then you'd have whatever version that you had. And you could keep it for 5, 10, 15 years as long as you, you, know, you were comfortable with an old version. Well, this um, productivity and business process, process segment has also shown strong growth. And I should, I got the segment wrong here. You can tell I reused the slide. Um, productivity and business process segment revenue grew from 26 billion in 2015 to 41 billion in 2019. So similar growth rate, 12% CAGR. You can see here that, um, you know, one of the big growth drivers is the growth in recurring revenue as they've moved from the traditional license sales to a more subscription model. And you can see a snip from their web page here where as a customer, if you scroll way down into the footnotes, you can still buy licenses, but you can see this is what they're marketing now. So if you've got a family, uh, $109 a year, Canadian personal, $79 a year, and then there's a home and business option. And of course, there's lots of uh, commercial options as well. Uh, and in this segment, they also acquired LinkedIn in 2016. And so uh, just another key uh, driver of the growth, again, from 26 billion in revenue uh, a few years ago to 40 billion today. CEO, uh, another point that I think we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about, Sadia Nadella, gets a ton of credit and I think he deserves it. Um, he became only the third CEO in Microsoft, almost 50 year history. So Bill Gates founded the company, Steve Ballmer was in there and then Sadia took over, uh, I believe it was in uh, uh, 2014. So he joined the company in 1992 and worked his way up, led the company's transformation to cloud infrastructure and services and uh, this is a great stat. I uh, just went and calculated. Microsoft stock price has appreciated by over 400% um, since he became CEO. So the stock was about $40 a share back then. And uh, that's just incredible uh, over that sort of call it six year time frame. And a second hat tip to Mr. Nadella added bonus. The uh, the reporting is consistent with the same three segments since 2016, uh, which provides great transparency for investors. Oftentimes with big companies, uh, segment in how they report gets changed almost annually, and it's really difficult to compare apples to apples. Uh, but since 2016, Microsoft's had the exact same three uh, reporting segments. So gets the hat tip. Metrics. Um, I think this is one of the last slides before we get into key considerations here, but wanted to talk about the strength of the business financially. And, you know, I thought it'd be interesting. Fundsmith, some of you may have heard of, is a UK based asset manager, and they're famous for their investment process. And they've actually delivered really, really strong returns over, over a fairly long periods of time. Uh, so if you have a chance, go and check them out. Uh, there's some YouTube videos on them and their website has an investment letters that are that are worth reading. But they're famous for, for saying, you know, we buy good companies, we try not to overpay, and then we do nothing. Um, and so part of that is they highlight key financial metrics to identify companies that are better than average. So how do you identify good companies? And uh, that's what we're going to do here on this slide is, you know, Microsoft metrics, they stack up favorably in all of Fundsmith's categories. So you can see here what, what we've done is I've just built a table and five key metrics for Fundsmith are return on capital, gross margin, operating margin, so sort of how profitable is the business, cash conversion, do they turn that profitability into cash, and interest coverage, how strong is the balance sheet. And what you can see here is the S&P 500 and this I've taken from Fundsmith. Uh, so this is their cal calculations. The average of the 500 companies here deliver 17% return on capital, 45% gross margin, 15% operating margin, cash conversion of 84%, and then seven times interest coverage. And then over here on Microsoft, these are my calculations, but you can see it's, it stacks up favorably in all cap categories. So return on capital employed, 25%, 
gross margins higher at 66, operating margins higher at 34, cash conversion, and, and this, this is for 2019, by the way, close to 100%, and interest coverage uh, it's not meaningful here because they've got net cash, so super strong balance sheet. And in 2019, Microsoft generated free cash flow of almost 40 billion and net cat and has net cash on their balance sheet of over 60 billion. Uh, so just thought it was important to note just how strong uh, the financial metrics are for my Microsoft. Here we go. So key considerations, and up until now, it's it's been a real loving for Microsoft stock on this video and you know we, we can't just talk about the good we got to also talk about the risks but first uh, let's hit on a few of the strengths that we've talked about secular tailwinds um, cloud increased IT spend I mean this is a this is a company with 120 billion plus in revenue that's growing at double digits that's impressive um, number two it's a leader in its segments um, you know Windows and Office they're close to the only game in town. I know there's alternatives, but they've really got a dominant market share. And then their other segments, they're, they're usually top three. You know, if you look at the cloud, they're, they're number two. Um, so they're, they're a leader in their segments. And, and a lot of that drives the third bullet, which is a highly profitable business model, asset light and free cash flow generative. And then they've got the strong balance sheet for net cash. So what could go wrong here? Um, on the risk side of things, you know, the first thing that jumps out to me anyway is the law of large numbers. It's a $1.6 trillion market cap now. And it was only maybe a year or two ago that, you know, that $1 trillion mark for a market cap was always uh, a bit of a curse. Whenever a company hit it, it, it usually dropped back down. It was tr tough to really eclipse that $1 trillion mark permanently. And I think those days are behind us now, but you know, Microsoft is one of, if not the largest companies in the world. And it gets, just gets really hard to continue to grow anywhere close to the rate uh, that they've been growing um, when you're that big. And so to that, you know, we saw in the cloud growth rates, another risk is deceleration in the, in the growth rate. You know, I don't think, I don't think it's going to turn negative, but you saw that 100% growth for Azure go down to 90, go down to 80, go down to 76. Um, and as those numbers, as that revenue, the cloud revenue gets bigger and bigger, it's really hard to sustain that type of growth rate. And, and you know, if we see a deceleration in that, what does that do? What does that do to the stock? Third is competition and all of their businesses, given how attractive um, it, the, their segment is, you know, it's highly competitive. Cloud's highly competitive. Amazon and Google are all both extremely well capitalized. And so I think, you know, as part of the competitive landscape, we know technology changes too. So right now things look really good. Microsoft's in a great position. You know, you'd argue they've got really strong moats around, um, around their business lines, but things can change pretty quickly in the tech sector and it, and it is highly competitive. Fourth being valuation. I think particularly if the uh, if the growth rates decelerate, as we talked about above, and and uh, we'll mention a few key valuation metrics on, on our concluding slide, and then lastly, CEO succession. I don't think Satya is very old. I think he's in his, his early fifties, I believe. So probably not something you need to worry about right now. But you know, I think we have to hand it to him. Uh, look at the stock price performance since he took took the helm. And that would be that would be something you'd want to uh, think about and make sure that uh, you know hopefully he's going to be there for years to come. Key drivers, pretty straightforward. So we'll just kind of go through them quickly. Increased IT spend, both business and personal. Cloud adoption and that license to recurring revenue that we talked about before. Uh, and then lastly, market share. So Microsoft's market share across their three segments. I mean, it's really the macro driver that's going to drive it here. And then Microsoft's competitive positioning or market share in their segments. So conclusion, Microsoft is executing on all fronts. Sec Secular growth name, one of few businesses that have benefited from COVID. Um, and we heard the CEO talk about pulling forward growth in cloud productivity so software with work from home. And I think the stock is also benefiting from investors looking for a safer, a safer place to hide right now. 
nothing's completely safe. Um, risks to the story, ability to continue to grow at double digits rates, particularly given the size of the business, you know, 130 billion in revenue. Competition we talked about, um, and competition part of that again is the ever-changing tech landscape. So it's not just the competitors today, it's who, who are the competitors of tomorrow. Uh, and then valuation, currently trading at 36 times trailing 12 month earnings and a 2.9% free cash flow yield. And I think I backed out the, the cash on the balance sheet, but anyway, I think it might be 2.4% free cash flow yield and then 2.9 when you adjust out the cash. So given the high quality business model, secular growth and execution, I was comfortable paying 30 times earnings, 30 times earnings, uh, not revenue. I'm not, I'm not there yet. Um, I just thought, you know, waiting to buy a stock like this at 20 times PE might not work. You might, you might sit there waiting for a long time, like you're waiting for the bus back in the day. Um, and as a bonus, you get a 1% dividend yield. Um, you know, you're not going to retire off that income, but it's something. So love to hear from you. You know, let me know your thoughts. It's, it's, a, it's a great story. It's hard to argue with that. But is it too late to jump aboard the Microsoft train? Uh, let, let me know your thoughts in the comments sec section below. That's it for today's video. Thanks for watching. Happy investing and don't bury your head in the sand.